This video is sponsored by Unusual Horror. To see the fully uncut version of this video, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. What's that like to live delicious? <laughs> What's going on? My name is John Joe Lyons, and today I'm here to present to you my review for Fetus. Written and directed by Brian Paulin, Fetus stars. All of these. Kevin's wife passed away while giving birth to their firstborn child. He cannot cope with the loss of family and becomes obsessed with making contact with her by any means possible. So a little while ago I reviewed a movie that I should have hated but the charm of the production and vision of the filmmaker won me over. That film was at dawn they sleep and the filmmaker in question is Brian Paulin. Go watch that review if you haven't seen it already. At dawn they sleep needs to be seen to be believed. I swore that day that I would cover everything that Brian's ever made and today I'm fulfilling that promise by taking on another blood splattered micro budget masterpiece. Fetus. But before we get into all of that, I just want to remind you, you can see this video completely uncut and early at patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons for as little as $2 a month. That's it. Want the videos uncut? Go there. And if you haven't got the $2 but still like the content, please click subscribe. Unless you're a Are you a Well, but anyway, I'm in the mood to watch a man lick his dog meat wife's eyeball for seemingly no reason at all, so let's not waste any more time. Get ready to meet 2008's father of the year. This is Fetus. The movie begins with this woman, Sarah, giving birth as her partner, Kevin, supports her. She says it doesn't feel right and the doctors scramble to help going for a C-section, which unfortunately doesn't yield the best results. <gasps> Cut to Kevin returning home with a baby but no wife, because she's dead. We get a flashback to Sarah being happy as Kevin looks upset. Cut to this stream, Kev on the couch and then to a home movie of Sarah playing with a kitty. We then see Sarah on the bed as Kevin tells her he wants to document her pregnancy. Kevin then unplugs his camera from the TV when he catches sight of something else in the house. <laughs> He tries to follow it but finds nothing so does a dramatic wall slide and we cut to another flashback where the pair try to decide on a name for their little girl. The cute conversation then turns sour as Kevin starts to worry about money. Don't worry. We'll be fine. Cut to Kevin looking at a gun and some bullets and then to Sarah crying on the toilet. Kev comes to check what's wrong and Sarah tells him she lost the baby and she's sorry. Hey, it's okay, Sarah. It couldn't have gone far. Where was the last place you saw it? Oh. Your womb. Ah. Uh. They hug as in the present, Kevin grabs his gun before putting it back down and we cut to him filming in the basement. I'm not quite sure what he's filming here. Is he trying to get extra footage of the thing that he thought he saw upstairs? Or is this just the intro to the darkest video you've ever seen? <laughs> He gets upset about his missus again and we cut to this farting skull. <laughs> cut to Kevin entering his local satanic convenience store. The clerk lists off his wares when Kev asks if he has any ritual books as he wants to contact the dead. I got some. Thank you. <sighs> For a relative? The clerk hands Kevin a book which he says is your usual wannabe witch but inside has a legit incantation mixed in with all the other stuff. I've made a fortune off those things. You'd be surprised how many necromancers use eBay. <laughs> I like this guy. The clerk says he's used it and promises it works before cautioning him to be prepared for what he's getting into. Cut to Kevin back in the basement with some candles as he reads from the book. In another flashback, we see Sarah loading up the washing machine before being jump scared by a piece of furniture that moves on its own. <sighs> 
And that's the end of that flashback. Cut to Kevin in bed as he dreams about Sarah giving birth when things take a turn. No! Here we see Kevin and Sarah have switched places and demon doctors, one of which is kinda hot, is stabbing the absolute f out of our hero while Tube Face over here gets all giddy. Kevin is then decapitated while Tube Face takes an axe to Sarah. <laughs> Cut to Kev waking up from this nightmare, then going for a drive. He parks up and watches this fella get in his car, then follows him as he leaves. After a little drive, Kev sees where his target lives and carries on as we cut to these two. Blonde says he can't stop thinking about the woman and baby who died today and his friend tells him to put it out of his mind. They hear coyotes and Blonde says he wants to see one when they're jumped by Kevin. You go play with your coyotes and I'll go take a piss. <laughs> I love that line delivery, he seems so happy to be going for a piss. Cut to Kevin's basement where we find Blonde in a bit of a situation. Kevin cuts deep into the back of this fella's head, picks up a hammer and crowbar, then starts pounding into his wound. LOL. <coughs> off Blonde's arm and smashes him in the mouth with the hammer. He removes the gag, then his teeth and bashes his f***ing brains in. <laughs> I've got to say, the gore effects in this one compared to At Dawn They Sleep are pretty bloody amazing. There were multiple moments in that scene that made me cringe, so I'm massively impressed. And we're only 25 minutes in. Cut to a shot of Sarah storming off because her womb doesn't work and then back to the carnage as Kevin completely skins one of his victims. A little while later, we see him at his makeshift altar as he reads from his book. He pours some blood around the candles, then continues to read, looking around and getting frustrated with his lack of success. Cut to Sarah, now heavily pregnant in the past, and then back to Kevin driving in the rain. He goes back to the store and tries to ask the clerk for help with the ritual, but the man isn't willing to hold his hand. I'm just running a business here. You wanted a book, I sold it to you. I'm not going to hold your hand and show you how to raise the devil. You feel like you're ripped off, buddy? That's life. Kevin buggers off, we cut to lightning, then back to the clerk as he stacks shelves. He then gets jumped by Kevin. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's what happened. Cut to the clerk waking up in Kevin's basement all tied up. He calls out for Kevin, then for seemingly no reason at all, throws his guts up. <laughs> That's the last time we order from Taco Bell. Kevin rocks up and again looks all upset, presumably because this wasn't the outcome he intended when the clerk wakes up. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I didn't realise his entire face exploded. <laughs> After nearly having a heart attack, Kevin jumps up and jams his thumbs into the hole that used to be the clerk's face, suffocating him, I guess. Not satisfied that the clerk is dead, Kevin brings a cinder block into the mix. He burns the clerk's bones, which doesn't work by the way, apparently, then takes a shower and goes to bed. It's then that Kevin begins to hear a baby giggling. He goes looking for the source of the sound, turns a corner and finds his beautiful partner breastfeeding. Who are you? <coughs> 
still would, obviously. I don't know why. I just like the idea of having sex. Not that I've ever done it. The closest I've been is having sex with somebody who was dead inside. So, halfway there. Cut to morning as Kevin looks at the book once more. He continues to look fed up when a candle is blown out and we cut to nighttime where Kev kidnaps this lady and brings her back to his lair. Cut to him cutting the woman's neck open and pushing a tube inside the vagina, I mean gash, I mean hole to siphon her blood. Next she's on the table and Kev pulls back the sheet revealing her grub sucklers. He tries her pulse and I guess doesn't get the result he wanted causing him to do another dramatic slide down the wall. Hey Kev, what the f*** did you think was gonna happen? You tore open the woman's throat and stole her blood, now you're pissed off she's not tap dancing. Cut to Kev chilling on the step and then to the upside down where he's approached by my girlfriend. She takes a seat in front of him, picks up her gun and shoots herself in the vagina. <laughs> Finally, a vagina that'll match my 9mm penis! Cut to Kev now apparently out of his dream as he talks to the ghost of Sarah asking she not watch what he's about to do. He says it's his last chance as nothing else has worked. He apologises and we cut to Kev the woman's corpse. One, lad, chop one up her for me and give us a smile while you do it. Apparently he's not smiling as she's all dried up so he adds some lube and cracks her open. Kevin then throws up on the woman's corpse like a f virgin when her vagina starts screaming. <coughs> Jesus Christ Kev, fair play. I've never made a vagina scream before. Best I've ever done is made one disappointed. I did make a vagina cry once but that's cheating because I supplied the tears. The tears were Kevin ducks out of the room, vomiting along the way before collapsing and passing out on the stairs. What you need to do, mate, is build up your tolerance, start off to pictures of dead bodies, then before you know it, you won't be able to finish without them. Cut to our hero waking up in a different part of the house and then trying to take a piss. Unfortunately, all that comes out is blood and it seems like his c is now a zombie, all peely skin and everything. He then pulls something out of his c hole and I don't know why, after everything I've seen, but this really made me gag. That one got me. It got me bad. Cut back to the dead woman as Kevin urges her to do something. He pushes down on her stomach which makes her throw up a ton of blood out of her vagina which is lovely. <laughs> oh. The dead woman then gives birth to whatever the f*** this is which Kevin looks through finding baby parts. Cut to him decapitating what I assume is his dead baby. You know, I feel like it's been forever since I last said this, but what the f*** is going on? I thought he was just trying to talk to his missus. Now dead women are giving birth to baby parts. Why were there two baby heads in the baby part suit? Who is this dead baby? His dead baby? Has he had it in the house the entire time? Why the f*** did he just cut his head off? For the love of God, Brian, help! The baby body then starts spurting human bean juice, so Kevin shoves it down the toilet where he's attacked by the dead woman. <laughs> Still hot as f What? The woman stabs herself in the vagina a bunch of times and splats the meat on the wall as Kev pulls bugs out of his d hole. She then pulls yet another baby head out of her vagina and licks the bloody stump when we cut to a shot of the rain outside and the dead woman dead again being showered. Kevin sticks his clothes in the fire and looks out the front door as we get more shots of Sarah before she died. You know, I just thought, you've got to be some next level type of to get killed by a baby. A baby tries to step to me, I'll knock it the f*** out. She's either a p***y or that baby is super gangster. Not even a day old and already caught a body. Respect, little one. Respect. Cut to Kevin cutting a metal circle out and Sarah once again before getting back to the basement. Kevin opens the woman's leg, sticks on a CSI outfit, then drapes some neck curtains over her. Next, he turns on an amp, plugs it into one of the baby's heads, pops on a mask and starts shocking himself. <laughs> even any point in asking what in the name of Helen Keller is going on here. The baby head starts to come alive as everything smokes and Sarah makes her appearance. <laughs> J 
Jesus Christ, man, look at her. And why are her tits the only thing on her body that doesn't look like they've been put through a blender? Not that I'm complaining, but man, I'm just confused. Kevin then licks Sarah's eyeball. What? When he hears a roar coming from the dead woman. Blood starts shooting out of the dead woman's now completely rubber vagina, followed by a hand and then a giant demon. The demon attacks Kevin, but he's able to get away, running upstairs to find blood pouring out of the light bulb and sink. He then grabs his gun and heads back downstairs when the lights go out. Kevin searches around for a bit when suddenly the lights come back on. He goes to Sarah, who it seems isn't very pleased to be back in the land of the living. How could you have done this to me? Don't you realize you've dealt with a family? It's revealed that their baby lived as we saw when Kevin first got home, but it's presented as a kind of a twist, which is confusing. Sarah curses Kevin out for bringing her back and neglecting their baby to death, I think. Again, much like the demon in At Dawn They Sleep, it's super hard for me to understand what the f*** she's saying. The demon then attacks again, setting Kevin on fire and popping him in the tum-tum. Sarah screams as the demon starts rolling around on the floor and Kevin's insides make their way to the outside. <laughs> the demon and Sarah have a fight. And the baby pushes its way out of Kevin's stomach as he screams. The baby then crawls away when the demon comes for Kevin, ripping his head to pieces. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we get the funniest thing I have ever seen in a horror movie. Thank you so much, Brian. That's genuinely the hardest I've laughed since my dad died. The demon then roars as the film cuts to black. Well, I didn't think it'd be possible for me to love Brian Paulin any more than I already did, but I was wrong. Can we be best friends, please? Fetus is another great effort from filmmaker Brian Paulin that doesn't just improve upon his earlier work, but also manages to tell a much more mature and emotional story, full of blood and dead babies. The story is a familiar one with a man losing his family and doing just about anything he can to get them back, including necromancy. After the vampire movie on crack that was at dawn they sleep, I was expecting something similar, but I've got to say I'm glad this one is a different beast. I also appreciated the simplicity of the tale with minimal locations, giving the film a much more theatrical feeling. This might just be me, but watching Fetus made me want to see a Brian Paulin directed stage play, of course starring the man himself. That's not to say Fetus is perfect by any stretch, with major confusion coming from multiple moments. Why was the supernatural stuff happening before Sarah even died? Why did the clerk vomit his guts up? What was the deal with his baby? Knows. At least everyone died at the end. I hate happy endings. Onto the gore and holy mother of God does this one get bloody. Fetus ups the ante in almost every way over at dawn they sleep with the face explosion being a standout. As I said, the film contains many gory moments that genuinely made me cringe, which is an achievement in and of itself. The movie's crowning effect though has to be Sarah's resurrected form. I was so impressed by the puppet here and couldn't believe it looked as good as it did. That being said, I still don't understand why her tits were fine, but the fact they were was so funny to me I didn't mind. Mind. Presentation wise, things are about as good as you'd expect from a film of this budget. The only thing I have a major problem with is the sound. Some of the dialogue was difficult to understand at times and the score volume was all over the place, but you know, sound is difficult, so I forgive him. All in all, Fetus is a great little gore film with a heart of gold. It's a massive improvement on Paulin's earlier work and makes me super excited to check out his most recent film, Septic. Brian, if you're watching, please cast me in your next film. I will literally do anything. For now though, I highly recommend Fetus to you if you're a fan of low budget splatter filmmaking or the man's other work. This is one Fetus you won't want to abort. Sorry. So that was my review for Fetus. What do you lot think? I thoroughly enjoyed this one and I'm so impressed with how much better the effects are. The way Sarah looks when she comes back is both horrifying and amazing. I am so sorry to the YouTube viewers who weren't able to see her, but trust me when I say she is glorious. 
Speaking of which, if you want to see a screaming vagina completely uncut and early, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lions for as little as $2 a month. Over there, we got a whole load of Patreon exclusive stuff, plus the Discord, so if you got $2, you might as well go over there now and check it out. And if you want to get your hands on this sick as f Fetus t-shirt, check out Unusual Horror. Unusual Horror is a clothing brand specializing in officially licensed extreme horror merch. Not only that, but they're also an official sponsor of the channel, so if you use the promo code JOHNJO on your order, you get 10% off. They have some of the sickest designs on the market, like my Fetus tee or the absolutely gorgeous Deathgasm tracksuit. I want it so f in much, I cannot tell you. They also have some sick originals on their site, so do yourself a favor and go check them out now at store.unusualhorror.com. That's promo code JOHNJO for 10% off. So that's it for another week. Like the video, leave a comment, and click subscribe if you haven't already. My name's JOHNJO Lyons, and I really don't understand what the f Kevin was up to here. Your wife and baby both died. You had an easy out. It's like winning the lottery and asking them to run the numbers again. What do you mean you loved her?